If you partake of the first resurrection, you don't partake of the second death. That's the riddle uh, in Revelation 20, verse 6, and that's the question I've got uh, this morning from, please don't use my name, I asked. My next question comes from Revelation 20. What is your explanation of the first revelation of the first resurrection in Revelation 20, verse 5, verse 6? I'll read it for you in a minute. Do you think that the rest of the dead that don't come to life until the thousand years are ended are non-believers that have died? Or does it also include believers that have died but were not martyred? I understand the 1,000 years to be a long time and not literal. Where else can I find a scripture that mentions a first or second resurrection? Don't use my name. Great question. Uh, here's what the text says. Uh, th th this Revelation 20, by the way, is a really important text when it comes to the discussion of the end times. In fact, the the millennium, which is means the 1,000 years, which is discussed here in Revelation 20, is the way that you determine what sort of end times doctrine you have. Are you a amillennialist, a premillennialist, a postmillennialist? That all has to do with where you place the return of Jesus and glory to the 1,000 years mentioned here, before, after, whatever. Uh, we've done videos on that. We probably need to do another one as well. But here's what it says, starting with Revelation 20, verse 5. But the rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Uh, Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. Over such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Now, if you just read that verse, it sounds like the first resurrection is what happens to the rest of the dead at the end of the thousand years. But it's referring instead back to the end of verse 4 where it says, uh, they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. The rest of the dead didn't live till the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. In other words, the first resurrection is the description of those who are living and reigning with Christ for the thousand years. Then there's a second resurrection that comes at the end of the thousand years. Now, this is a, a riddle here because it says that if you have a part in the first resurrection, you won't have a part in the second death. But the converse is also true. If you don't have the first resurrection, then you do have the second death. So uh, Revelation gives us two resurrections, the first and the second, and two deaths, the first and the second. And uh, it's, it's a fantastic little riddle. In fact, it, to, to, if you want to write it out, it goes first resurrection, first death, second resurrection, second death. And you either get the first three or the last three. <laughs> so what are they? It turns out that everybody gets the, the second death and everybody gets the first resurrection. And that refers to the body. Uh, sorry, I should give you a chance to pause and to sort of work it out the riddle yourself. But here's the solution. The first death is the death of the body, the separation of body and soul, what we experience when our heart stops or whatever. The, second, the first resurrection is the bodily resurrection. The, the, what happens when Jesus returns in glory and our bodies and souls are put back together. And everybody participates in both of those. Every single person will die and every single person will be raised, believer and unbeliever alike. But the first resurrection happens, in fact, before you die. And that's the spiritual resurrection. And the second death happens after you're raised. And that's the eternal death in condemnation. And so those who participate in the first resurrection don't participate in the second death. I should draw a picture. Well, I've got a picture. I'm not sure if it helps. But there's the our resurrection one, death one, resurrection two, death two. And this is what happens to the body. You die and then you're raised. Every single person, believer and unbeliever, die and then are raised. But if you participate in the first resurrection, then you don't participate in the second death. But if you don't participate in the first resurrection, then you do participate in the second death. Okay. So that leads, the, the, the key then is this first resurrection. And how do we participate in the first resurrection? What is it? And for that, I want to turn to Romans chapter 6, where Paul says, 
Therefore, we are buried with him, Jesus, by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. This is the, this is the first resurrection. Your baptism, your, your faith in Christ, your being born again, so that you're already, Paul says in Ephesians 6, raised with Christ and seated with him in the glory of the Father. And that means that the baptized, can you imagine this, that the baptized will not uh, die forever. You're, you're already raised. God, God be praised. So that little riddle is a riddle of great comfort and great peace. Uh, thank you so much for the question. Let's deep dive into this uh, Romans 6 verse a little bit this morning. Uh, Paul's writing um, to the Romans who he'd never met before, and it's the most systematic treatment of the theology. So he starts with the gospel, the authority of God's word, especially the Old Testament, sin, uh, the work of Christ to save us from sin, death, and the devil, the doctrine of justification, how that salvation is brought to us, and then um, what that means for our own life. So Romans 6 is this great transitional place in the, God, in the epistle where Paul is now talking about uh, why it matters that we're justified by faith, with the faith of Abraham and so forth. And he starts with a couple of rhetorical questions, which always follow the preaching of the gospel, because we're inherently, um, our, our, our default religion, remember, is self-justification. We want to justify ourselves. And, uh, and if we hear something like, we're saved by grace through faith, we think, oh, well, that just means, well, you can do whatever you want, sin and do whatever you want. That's how the gospel sounds to uh, us, is like license. So Paul says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid, may Ganetod, God forbid. How shall we, who are dead to sin, live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death? Therefore, we were buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in newness of life. So the death is a, baptism is a death and resurrection. This text is used by Martin Luther in the fourth question on baptism in the small catechism. The first, what is baptism? What benefits does it give? How can water do such great things? And then what's the significance? So that, so that Paul puts our, our baptism at the center of our life, of our Christian life. In baptism, we're born again. In baptism, we put on Christ. In baptism, we're dead and raised so that we live no longer for the flesh, but for Christ Jesus, who's claimed us as his friend and as, his, as the children of God. It's beautiful. The, the, I remember, and I, I think we've talked about this before, but I remember um, teaching Ryan and Casey. We were working on memorizing this particular text, and they were having trouble uh, memorizing it. And I said, okay, you got to imagine it. And I think this is a, a wonderful thing for all of us. It says, we were buried with him by baptism into death. So you have to think of what does it mean that we died with Christ and were buried with him? If you can imagine Jesus on the cross and you're next to him. He's nailed to the cross. You're nailed to the cross. He's suffering and dying and breathing his last and you breathe your last. And then they come and they take him off the cross. They put the ladder up to the cross beam and they get the crowbar and they put the veil under his arms and around the, and they pull him off the cross. And they pull you off the cross and they quick wrap Jesus in a linen cloth and they wrap you and then they lift up your bodies and 
there's four people carrying Jesus and four people, and they're carrying you behind them. And they, they hustle down to the garden where there's the grave and they, they quickly lay Jesus in there and they're preparing his body and you're right next to him. The guy's outside says, we got 30 minutes till Sabbath. And so they, they roll the stone over the grave. And you're there with Jesus in the darkness. He's dead. And you're dead. And then three days later, or on the third day, I should say, you look over and Jesus is looking back at you. And you say, you're alive. And he looks at you and says, so are you. You want to get out of here? And you and Jesus walk up out of the grave. That's the picture of baptism. We were buried with him by baptism into death. Just as Jesus was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too should walk in newness of life. <laughs> Paul prays for the Ephesians. This is Ephesians chapter 1, that they would know the power that's at work within. It's the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. It's fantastic. So, so think about that, and it changes it changes everything. You know, we, we're no longer living for the, for the flesh. This is going to be what Paul is going to talk about next. In, in Romans 7, the good that I would, I don't. And, but, uh, it's no longer a life lived for the flesh. It's a life lived for the Son of God. A, a life eternal begun already. So that if you have the first resurrection... You don't have the second death. That's the good news. God be praised. Hey, thanks for jumping in. The Daily Whatnot. Hey, that's all right. The Daily Whatnot. If you have questions, wolfmuller.co slash contact. Uh, that's a wonderful way to send them to me. Or if you're on YouTube, you can post it up uh, here below. Don't forget to sign up for Wednesday Whatnot. The weekly-ish newsletter comes out on Wednesday, mostly. Anyway. Stuff I'm thinking about and uh, stuff I found interesting that goes up on there Wednesday, whatnot. Thanks for being part of the fun. God's peace be with you.